Democratic Labour Party 001 was a man called Douglas P. Lynch. Douglas Lynch in the 70s was the leading, certainly one of the leading, if not the leading, merchants, merc members of the merchant type class, business class, commercial class in Barbados. The chairman of Barbados Shipping and Trading and the chairman of about 15 other large corporations in Barbados was 001 on the Democratic Labour Party membership. He was among the first candidates to run for the Democratic Labour Party when they contested the 1956 election. In other words, he was there at the formation of the Democratic Labour Party. The leading businessman in Barbados, not of the colour of anybody in this room. Very, very close to Errol Barrow and to the hierarchy of the Democratic Labour Party. Errol Barrow, and I'm not here to decry him, but I'm here to speak the facts. We made the right excellent Errol Barrow, national hero, re recognize that, yes, he made a significant contribution to this country, one of the leading contributions, certainly his term of office between 1961 and 1971 were the 10 best years of governance of the Democratic Labour Party out of the 27 years that they have had the honour of governing this country. Because the other 17 of the 27 have been absolute disasters. Errol Barra's last term, 71 to 76, was a total disaster whereby the economy plummeted tremendously cost of living went up fantastically. We had a sales tax of 5%. Um, you will remember the constitutional crisis, 1974-75 um, changing of the constitution. Errol Barr went in parliament, cussed everybody, including the church. Um, the roads were horrible. But, the, but let us deal with facts. Um, as great as he was, and of course we made him a national hero. Errol Barr was the greatest elitist out of all the leaders of Barbados, where it was not any Barbados Labour Party leader who told um, a then DLP senator who was a candidate that the son of a carpenter cannot be Prime Minister of Barbados. With Errol Barr who told John Connor that. Um, 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 um. It was not any leader of the Barbados Labour Party who said in the Parliament of Barbados, I think it was in 1985, that only two people in this Parliament could be Prime Minister of Barbados, Rich St. John and myself, because both of us born on the plantation. It was Errol Barrow who said that. It was not an, any leader of the Barbados Labour Party that went in St. Thomas in the by-election in 1985 after the death of the great Tom Adams when David Simmons was elected and said that the people of St. Thomas, you could always tell of the LP because the smell bad, the teeth <laughs> rotten, and they look dirty. Barra, I understand who said that. I was in Canada, that, but that's my understanding of the records. So, let us talk straight. That when you're talking about elitism and conservatism, it is the Democratic Labour Party, if any of the two parties. One of the greatest fallacies in this country ever to perfect, be perpetuated is that the Barbados Labour Party is a party for the rich people and for the white people. The majority of white people in this country voted for the Democratic, used to vote for the Democratic Labour Party when Harold Barrow was in the fact, the majority of white business people used to vote for Errol Barrow. Many of them came from St. John, the Goddard. Traditionally, only one Goddard out of the big name Goddard was a DLP Philip. You had Kiahan, who was a strongly supportive of the Democratic Labour Party. You had Blanche, who was strongly supportive of the Democratic Labour Party. You had the Simpsons, even now, strongly supportive, at least Sir Kiffin, as I understand it strongly supportive of the Democratic Labour Party. All these people, Errol Barr gave knighthoods to, yeah. or I think in the case of Kiffin Simpson, this government, I believe it, it, it's who gave them. All of them got knighthoods under Errol Barrow. 
So let us say facts. I remember one one um, Christmas I, I was looking for a party, a birthday party in Fitz Village and I missed, you know, I didn't have the exact directions. I missed and went in this house and they had about 75 men. It was an all-men party. And believe you me, the only two black men in this party were Harold Barra and Sleepy Smith. All the rest, white men. So, you know, but, yes, I, I, I give credit to the Democratic Labour Party. Um, and it was mainly Sir Cameron Trudor, Sir James Trudor, who was the propaganda genius. You know, that is the fact of the matter. A genius, I, I, I we can see that, was able to create this impression that the BLP is this party for white people and rich people and, and the DLP is the working class people. <laughs> Not true. Never was, never will be. David Thompson in 2008, the majority of white people in Barbados and business people voted to bring this DLP government into office in 2008. I remember one Goddard meeting me in the supermarket and told me, well, I knew them well, the son went to school with me at that school out there and said, boy, Eddie, boy, Eddie, boy, we, we got to vote you all out this election, boy, all of we, all of we got to vote in you all out, but that is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact of the matter. So don't let's get tied up about this misconception. You know, if you, Goebo said, in fact, said, that if you tell a lie often enough, <laughs> it becomes true. If you tell fiction, you repeat it often enough, it becomes a fact. And that is the Prime Minister and the DLP's yes. philosophy. You say all the time that, yeah. man, you know, there's the international recession yeah. from 2007 and that is why in 2017, 10 years, after we can get our economy to grow more than 1.5%. And, 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 and they expect you sensible people to believe that because they repeated it all the time. It's not true. It is their economic mismanagement and their absolute incompetence and callousness that had Barbados in the position. So right now, there's nothing to do with any international economic recession that stopped long time ago in America, that never was in certain countries in Australia, Canada, one of our main trading partners, and certainly in international business, didn't have any recession for years and years. So that is the position. The Professor Winston Moore, someone who holds no brief for either party, brought out a indisputable facts that over the last 41 years, of governance of this country. Every time the Barbados Labour Party in office, the economy grows on average 2.2 percent more than it does under the Democratic Labour Party. And over 41 years, that can't be a coincidence. That has to have something to do with competence and understanding of an economy and a society. So don't go on, let's get tied up here with all of this. Democratic Labour Party, as I understand it, it was the year I was born, 1961. But my understanding is that Winter Crawford, who a lot of people credit, um, a lot of the social and, and development policies of Barbados in the 50s, the industrialization policy, etc., that he was to be leader of the Democratic Labour Party and Prime Minister after um, the, the, the Dems won. But Errol Barr was made Prime Minister. A man born on a plantation, uncle, went to university in London at the turn of the 20th century to be a, to study medicine. Rich family, landed aristocracy of Barbados. Winter Crawford couldn't be Prime Minister. Yet this Prime Minister could come last week and talk about how the Barbados Labour Party in 1958 refused to make uh, Mencia Cox, um, leader and premier, because he was a taxi driver. Rather than looking at the mole in his own eye, in his own party. Why is the member for Sir Michael Central, who 
I have no doubt will not be a member this time next year because Marcia Carroll is one of the brightest young women ever to enter politics in Barbados. And we may, and we may give, if given the opportunity, a tremendous um, contribution to the development of the immediate development of Barbados. Why is the member for St. Michael Central, an individual who grew up in a gated community called Highgate, part of the aristocracy of Barbados, why is he de facto deputy prime minister? Something that people like the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister, minister of Commerce resent. Because David Eshwick has told you that he's ready to be Prime Minister. He didn't have to say that publicly. Publicly, We all know that. <laughs> you know, but the Minister of Tourism is their back to a Deputy Prime Minister. He's the one who, presumably if he were to find a way to win a seat, which, as I said, I doubt he will be able to do. But he's the one who, the Dems, the hierarchy of the DLP, and who obviously this Prime Minister, by making him de facto Deputy Prime Minister, is pushing to be the next leader of the DLP, not any of the others from the so-called working class, if they were to win their seat. So this thing has to be confronted head on about the Barbados Labour Party being this arch-conservative party back in the, the days of colonialism and wanting to suppress and depress poor working class people. This is, the Democratic Labour Party has never been led by someone who is not an attorney at law, except in the case of Sir Lloyd Sandiford, who was part of the landed gentry in my constituency, family owned that man in Mount Stanford in my constituency, but he's the only one who is not an attorney at law who has ever led the Democratic Labour Party. But yet we have this Prime Minister talking about ancient history 60 years ago that the Barbados Labour Party today is an elitist party because 60 years ago, Mencia Cox didn't become leader and, and he didn't become leader because he was a taxi driver. We have to debunk this and confront it. I'm sorry to have to spend this time on this kind of political nonsense. But the fact is that if you let it get too far ahead of each other, it will get wheels and we will be in trouble.